July 12, 2016, a summer afternoon. I was just finished getting my hair cut at a barber shop on 21st of Pulaski. I was walking back home when I was shot on 14th of Pulaski. I got shot three times in both of my legs. The fourth bullet skinned my foot. The doctors told me I could have died from losing too much blood. And they also told me I could have been paralyzed in my right leg if the bullet would have been any closer to my leg. Why is there so much gun violence in Chicago? I lost a lot of love to gun violence. I lost a cousin, a godbrother, and an uncle, and a father to gun violence. I think it has to do with a combination of things, but uh, you know, some of the most important things that I see is the the elimination of jobs and other opportunities, the elimination of social supports like uh, how public housing, welfare, schools, and combined with that, uh, we, the way that that our society has has a strong reliance upon violence to solve problems, and we model that with the heavy use of policing and mass incarceration. We model, we, we, we've got that long history of slavery, colonization, genocide. So the use of violence to solve problems is something that gets reproduced and, and taught and passed on from generation to generation. And I think you can't just ignore the, the, the fundamental importance of, you know, of racism, of materialism, patriarchy. Um, the economy has left many Chicagoans behind. So what are you going to do to feed your family? What are you going to do to make a living? You, you may resort to things that require you to have a, um, a weapon. So if we, I think those are two places we can work as a society, better, stricter gun laws and working on our economy so that more people uh, benefit from um, our uh, social programs, from just getting jobs. When you look at it, it's really us killing us, and then you have the police that just stepped in and just took over from there. But um, when I was coming up, it wasn't as much violence because I'm 45 than it is now. Honestly, these days, these kids are, whew, they're a trip. But you can't really just blame it on them. It goes as far as the upkeeping that's brought in the home. So, you know, it's the way you teach your kids and then you get them out here into society. You know, you can teach a child one thing at home, but when they get in the streets, it's something totally different. So, I mean, it can go from peer, peer pressure to the home probably not being stable. I mean, there's, there's several aspects to this, I think. First of all, you know, because the U.S. is such a violent society, the culture that we create is so violent that uh, because of the history of slavery and colonialism, people believe that you know guns are a way to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And so we also see in the way that the Second Amendment gets interpreted, you know, this made it very, e very easy for people to have access to guns in the United States that you don't see in most other societies. So there's a much more broad, broader acceptance of that people should have the right to have guns and use guns in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and the Supreme Court, you know, has in the last five years or so had a couple of decisions that have made it so that cities like Chicago that had historically tried to limit the ability to sell and carry guns, mm -hmm. those, those regulations have been eliminated, making it so that the city has to be able to have gun sales in here and people have to be able to have the right to carry guns with them on the, on the street with particular permits, right? right? But but then there's another aspect to that which is the kind of the the flow of unregistered weapons from neighboring states like Indiana all the way down to places like New Orleans where guns are being bought and brought up and sold in Chicago in a kind of in a less regulated way. Um, but, but none of that would happen if there wasn't such a you know, federal constitutional commitment to, to gun ownership mm -hmm. in the society. That's a really good question. How are they able to obtain guns so easily? You know, uh, so you, you gotta really ask yourself the question, 
is there a more sinister issue at hand? Um, I, I would like to know that. But when, you know, when I talk to the guys on the street, like, well, where do you get your guns? They know where they get their guns. Some of them says, look, I can go over to that convenience store. Uh, and when they get their shipment of milk and other stuff, part of that shipment are some additional guns. We also know uh, that there are trains that run through our city. And sometimes those trains kind of break down uh, and uh, those trains are robbed with guns. I, I'm thinking, hmm, how does that happen? Uh, I think there's some intentionality. I, 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 I hope I'm wrong, but it feels like there's some intentionality around uh, making sure that guns are illegally received, even if they're a uh, police department that may say, uh, we've got guns, maybe we drop a few off in some of these neighborhoods. I don't really have an answer for that, but there's a gut feeling something's very wrong about what we're seeing. Honestly, no. I'm just okay. No, I don't. It's, it's a complicated question, right? Because the law enforcement works so differently in different communities. If I was to call law enforcement, I believe that they would come and mm -hmm. protect me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that that's the case for everybody in Chicago, and, mm -hmm. that, and, and that's, that's fundamentally the problem. It, is that the, the, the kind of race and class differences in the way the police operate and the way that they treat different people. Honestly, right now, this time with that, nope. Nope. I'm just gonna keep it real. Nope. Um, why? It's like blacks are being stereotyped. You know, first it was the braids, now it's locks. You know, you walk three people down the street, that's what would you call um, mob action. But honestly, I mean, the way it is today, blacks are more uh, are stereotyped. A couple of times, but it really touched home um, over Thanksgiving weekend when my nephew Kawan Ray got killed by the police on the south side. Well, first of all, um, I have a 20-year-old son myself, and Kwan was just 19, so that's like being six months apart. And honestly, he just went to the bus stop to get walked to the bus stop to go home. But he never made it home. You know, he came, his parents had to do, you know, how could you say it? Um, go to the mall to identify. When I was coming up, and I was 19, you could walk to the bus stop with no problem. The police ride up on you, ask you a question, and they keep it moving. These days, it's just excessive force. And I mean, honestly, the police are rogue. Because I mean, you're giving them a, a, a badge and a gun, and it's just basically you let them do what they want. So basically, I think as far as, they do need to be properly trained over The, the, those, those opportunities have been almost systematically eliminated. Mm. Uh, and, you know, again, we can talk about, like, opportunities for housing, right? The public housing has all been de demolished in, in the city of Chicago. The voucher program, there are very few vouchers available. People get on waiting lists and have to look all outside of the city even to try to find places that will accept a voucher. Schools are being shut down, closed down. The commitment to public education is, 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 is minimal. Um, and so, and then obviously like the, the jobs just aren't there, right? So corporations are looking for the cheapest labor source available, they're looking overseas, they're replacing jobs that people did with jobs that are automated and robots do. So there's very few opportunities. Uh, I think there needs to be another system at play, uh, but I don't think the systems at play can be provided maybe by a government agency. I think there has to be other agencies. So when I'm not at school, I serve as a pastor, right? And I realize that churches have an amazing capacity 
to not only work within the system, but to work around the system. Because if a church says, look, part of our finances that we receive, we'll use and we'll create jobs. Uh, we won't really necessarily focus on a person's background. We'll work on his current status and his character and give them uh, a gracious opportunity and build into the whole person so the person can have a job, provide meaningful employment, uh, uh, meaningful uh, uh, gain for family and so forth. And uh, perhaps he might not ever have his uh, background as sponge, but he can see that there is another way forward. If we could fix the gun laws, we could have a situation that Canada has, where they, they don't even lock their doors in some of the cities. That's the first reason that we have the horrific gun violence. Well, a lot of my friends will say, well, Chicago has some of the most strict gun laws. And I say to them, well, I think you can come from Indiana, you can come from any state in the union, you don't have to show a passport to get into Illinois. So the guns are coming from all over the country. Uh, what I think you and I and most of society knows is that we don't have the industrial capacity to, to, to harvest steel, uh, to make and manufacture guns and bullets. Uh, that's not something we have access in our community. And yet somehow, uh, the, there seems to be uh, an amazing flow of guns into our community. It's not uh, flowing into the north side of Chicago, not flowing on the Gold Coast of Chicago, but more on the west side and south side where uh, many of minorities live. So you start asking yourself, are the, uh, the people in power that oblivious to the fact that there is a trail of guns flowing in our community? Or are they complicit? Are they part of the problem? 